Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense, and today is the day where I'm going over my five least favorite releases that came out in 2019, Designer Edition. So yeah, the thumbnail says that these are the worst releases of 2019, but that's just my opinion, and my opinion could be completely different than your opinion. If you love some of the fragrances that I go over here today, understand that it's not a personal shot at you, I just don't like these fragrances. So, without further ado, let's jump into this, and I'll go over with you guys my five least favorite fragrances that came out in 2019, designer-wise. If you've watched some of the reviews that I've done throughout the year, a lot of these fragrances are not going to be surprises when you see them on this list. The first one I want to talk about with you guys is an honorable mention, or I guess it would be a, a dishonorable mention. So this one could have crept into the top five, though it's not actually, in my opinion, one of the worst fragrances that came out this year. And some of you might even say that it's not a designer, but we'll go over that. So the fragrance is this one, L'Homme Ideal Cool by Guerlain. And a lot of you out there are gonna say Guerlain is technically not a designer brand. It's a niche brand, a niche house, but I wanted to include this one anyway. And since this is the Loam Ideal line, I consider that more of a designer line in Guerlain's line of fragrances. So like I said, this is technically not one of the worst fragrances of the year. It doesn't smell all that bad. So why would it be a dishonorable mention? Uh, the reason for that is because it's replacing this one, Loam Ideal Cologne, which has been discontinued, unfortunately. And in my opinion, Cool is actually a worse fragrance than the one it's replacing. This one has the almond note that pretty much every fragrance in the Loam Ideal line has, along with mint and citrus and vetiver. Now, the big difference between Cool and Cologne is going to be that mint note that you find here in Cool. But in my opinion, the way that Cool is done, which I say in the review that I've done of Cool, uh, it's not as good as Cologne. The mint is not really super nice to me. It's slightly mentholated and just comes across like a bit of a failure to me. Essentially, it's like Guerlain took a look at Lomity All Cologne and said, huh, let's discontinue that, then put some mint over the top of it, make the citrus less interesting, give it a, a watery undertone with a little bit of vetiver and ship that out the door. And that's what it is. In my opinion, Lomity All Cool, a worse version of the fragrance that it is replacing. So that gets it a dishonorable mention. The fragrance itself, not all that bad. It's just the circumstances surrounding the fragrance. Now we get to get into the fragrances that I don't like very much. And I'm gonna spray each one of these on my skin as I go through this and then take a shower right after the video. Number five of my least favorite fragrances released this year is this one, Dolce & Gabbana K. Let's go ahead and give this a spray. It has juniper, citrus, pimento, vetiver, and blood orange. So yeah, I guess two separate citrus notes there. This one, as I said in my review, in my opinion, is one of the bottom tier blue fragrances out there that you can get. Uh, to me, it's just not very appealing. The way that it comes across is just kind of funky off my skin. Obviously, since this is a blue fragrance, it's going to have that versatility. It's gonna have that mass appeal. But in my opinion, it is uh, lower on the mass appeal rating than pretty much every other blue fragrance out there on the market, like I mentioned before. Your Dylan Blues, your Blue de Chanel's, your Dior Sauvages, those are all better than K, in my opinion. It has a little bit of a shampoo or shower gel kind of vibe to it with an herbal feel as well. And off my skin, it just, it doesn't work. And the bottle as well, in my opinion, is tacky. I don't like the way it looks. I know that this bottle is kind of love it or hate it. Some people out there absolutely love this bottle. They adore it. They think that the cap is super cool. Uh, for me though, I just, I hate it. The first time I saw this online, before it actually came out in stores, I thought that it looked like uh, like a knockoff bottle almost, like something you would find on Wish.com. That's what it looked like to me. I was like, that's, 
it's really what they're gonna go for. Uh, okay. <laughs> and then I saw it in stores uh, and yeah, that is exactly what they went for. Just a rectangular plain bottle with a terribly cheesy cap. Like I said, I know a lot of people out there do like K. They think it's a very fresh, refreshing blue fragrance and it's actually one of the most popular releases of the year, designer-wise. So I know there are a ton of you out there that love that one and you're gonna think I'm out of my mind. It's just, like I said, blue fragrance-wise, I can't think of another blue fragrance out there that I would want to wear less than this one. So there we go. Dolce & Gabbana K, number five. Number four is another fragrance that I have reviewed. This is one I had decently high hopes on, and then uh, when I got it in and gave it some wear, I quickly realized that it's just not a very good release. It's this one, Carolina Herrera CH Kings. So yeah, we've got kind of a back-to-back -back King bottle thing going on. This one has pink pepper, musk, cacao, tonka, and lavender as some of the notes in the fragrance. Now let's give this one a spray here. Like I said, this is another fragrance that I did a review on. This one also has a bottle that's a little bit love it or hate it. It has a kind of a velvety feel to it all the way around the bottle, which actually feels pretty good in your hand, and then has this somewhat tacky spade with a sword going through it. It's gonna remind you of a card, remind you of Las Vegas maybe. And yeah, I'm smelling this uh, on my wrist here and it's just not <laughs> very good. It's really not. Carolina Herrera fragrances, especially in the CH Men line, are really well known for being pleasant, compliment getting, good night out kind of fragrances. And this one tries to pull that off. It's got that tonka, it's got that cacao, so you would think it would have some kind of sexy sweetness to the fragrance, but it just smells poor. It's like a jumble of notes, kind of a mishmash. It doesn't really work together that well. None of the notes come out very clearly. It's just sort of a mess. In my review for that one, I completely ripped it and said that it's absolutely not worth owning and I still think it's not worth owning. It's it's not very good. There are three fragrances that I dislike more than that one though, so let's keep the list moving. Number three was a huge <laughs> disappointment to me. This one was a, a very large letdown and I know a lot of you out there feel the same way though. Some younger guys out there probably are going to really like this fragrance and be able to pull the almighty compliment with it. <laughs> it's uh, Valentino Womo, Born in Roma. And we'll go ahead and spray that on as well. I'm gonna smell like a mess. It says mineral notes, sage, salt, vetiver, and ginger as some of the notes in the fragrance. And this has absolutely nothing to do with the Valentino Womo line at all. To an extent, this is Valentino trying to get their bubble gum sweet fragrance out there. They want a little bit of a, a share of that bubble gum sweet market. You know, that Invictus has a stranglehold on. Valentino wants a little piece of that pie. And that's what this fragrance is trying to accomplish. And it's just, it's just not very good, in my opinion. Valentino is trying to get that Invictus bubble gum sweet money from the teenagers and the young guys out there who are looking for compliments, who are looking for um, night out fragrances. That's basically what they're doing here. And it's unfortunate because the Valentino Womo line is very highly respected for the most part as far as designer lines go. Typically the fragrances in the Womo line smell of very high quality and they fit right in for the most part with that upper tier of designers. Almost up there with your Dior's, maybe not Chanel, but right up there. And then this comes along and it's just like, what are you doing? Now, like I said, I know younger guys out there especially are gonna really like this one, or a lot of them probably will. But in my opinion, it's just not very good. And if you're trying to go along that line, the super sweet, very youthful side, of designer fragrances, there are much, much, much better choices out there than this one. It just comes across immature, comes across very synthetic, a little bit cloying, not a great release. And now we are in the bottom two. I don't own either of these right now. <laughs> the one that came in first place, I did own, 
and then I got rid of it. But I did go to a store this evening and spray it on a tester strip to remind myself of how much I don't like it. And the one that comes in second place, I have sampled. I had a carded sample, I gave it some wear, and I decided I'm not gonna buy that. And that's uh, this one right here, which I got a sample of this evening just for this video for you guys. It's Jimmy Choo Urban Hero. Ambergris, vetiver, rosewood, and leather are some of the notes in this scent. And uh, here's the sample of Urban Hero. Here's what the bottle looks like right here. So yeah, Urban Hero. I sampled this when it was new, brand new, at my local Belk. And I decided, yeah, there's no way that I'm picking that up. And uh, it's not cheap at retail. It's 98 bucks for a 100 mil size bottle. So $100 we'll call it. And it has not really shown up at discounters yet. Uh, at least not that I'm aware of, but to be honest, I haven't been paying a ton of attention with this fragrance showing up at discounters because the only way I'd pick it up is if it were 20, 25 dollars. And I would basically just be picking it up for a video like this one. Ooh. Yeah, that is just a, just a mess. It's very boring and it's just, uh, <laughs> it's almost just like, is it even there? You spray it on and it's this bland blue fragrance that just lays on your skin and just dies there. And nobody cares that you have it on and you don't care that you have it on either. When they say ambergris in this fragrance, of course, they mean ambroxan, but they're trying to make it sound fancier. We all know this has no ambergris in it. You would think also with notes like leather, rosewood, vetiver, that it would have this, um, this strong masculine base with some, some rich woods with leather over top of it, maybe. But no, it's just some generic blue shower gel sort of Thing. To be fair, are people going to smell this and be like, oh, that's offensive what you have on, it's disgusting. No, they won't do that. My voice just cracked, I think. But they won't do that. But they will say, that's okay. But do you want to spend $100 to have somebody smell your fragrance and go, eh, you smell like shower gel. Mm, no, I think you probably don't. And yet that's what this is. It's so completely and utterly forgettable that you smell it and it's just like your brain registers that you're smelling something and as soon as it's gone you've forgotten what it smelled like. Honestly, if I smelled somebody wearing this in public, I would have no clue what it was. Even if I literally got up from right here where I'm filming right now, smelling it on my hand and walked by somebody five minutes later, I would not know what it was. I would just go, well, that's some forgettable something. And that's the issue with this. It's just, it's pointless. I completely understand the want, the desire to have a fragrance that's versatile, that lasts a long time, that's people pleasing, that will get you compliments. Something you can wear anywhere, day or night, formal, casual, on a date, whatever. I understand that. I actually really, really enjoy Yves Saint Laurent Y Eau de Parfum. I think it's awesome. I don't care what other people say. YSL Y Live, I like that fragrance as well. Blue de Chanel, Eau de Toilette. Love that fragrance. Um, Dior Sauvage Eau de Toilette. Don't use it as much as the Y. Don't use it as much as the Blue de Chanel, but still really enjoy that fragrance as well. I don't have it out for blue fragrances. They don't bother me. I know some people they do bother. They don't bother me at all. But this one sucks. And with that out of the way, let's go over the worst release of 2019, in my opinion. And this is one that I did pick up and then got rid of. <laughs> and I didn't even review it, though maybe I will in the future, I guess, if I get another bottle. And it is John Farvados X Nick Jonas JV XMJ Silver Edition, which looks like so. If you thought Jimmy Choo Urban Hero was boring, you have not seen anything yet. JV XMJ Silver, in my opinion, is just the most bland fragrance that I have smelled all year. Oh God, it's so boring, it's so boring. And the thing with this fragrance is, it takes no chances, none. You can hate on a fragrance 
for being different and saying, oh, it doesn't work off my skin. So like Alien Man Fusion, that is something I don't really love. I don't love the way that smells, but at least it's a little bit different. It's not trying to be everything else out there. It's its own thing. So if somebody falls in love with Alien Man Fusion, it's like, okay, cool. You found some fragrance that's different and it speaks to you. It does things its own way and I can respect that. This takes no chances and is the most bland, boring citrus musk that I've smelled in a long, long time. I'm not trying to be mean if you love JV XNJ Silver, more power to you, but to me, it is the worst of the year. And honestly, I don't think it's super close. <laughs> like, the first time I smelled this, when I got it in, I, I did a blind buy, which I know, bad, don't do blind buys, but I sprayed it on and I was like, wow, that is just boring. Let me read off some of the notes for JV XNJ Silver Edition, because they really try to sell it with these notes. A mineral accord, green leaves, electric citrus, chromatic sage, shadow woods, sexy amber, and silver musk. They're really, really trying to draw you in with the descriptors that they put behind each one of those notes. It's not sage, it's chromatic sage. It's not woods. It's shadow woods. And then you see all those notes and you go, oh, that's, that's interesting. I wonder how they worked in the mineral accord with the green leaves, with the woods, the amber, the musk. You spray it on, nah, nah. Just a random crappy citrus, like a, a sharp citrus and some musk. It's not good. It's so boring. It, it really honestly is. I can't imagine the fragrance ever drawing anybody's attention and having them go, wow, that smells great. Because it's just, poof. It's like some cheap body spray. Really cheap smelling. And you know what else? On top of it smelling that way, it has trash performance. Trash performance. Off my skin, couple hours, gone. And I don't even mean, oh, it's a skin sense. I mean, oh, it's not even there. Maybe 30 minutes projection. That's about it. It's so trash performance wise that I went to the mall maybe an hour before shooting this video. I loaded this tester strip down courtesy of Ulta Beauty and guess what? I can't even smell it. <laughs> like it doesn't even stay on a tester strip. It's, it's really bad. I don't even think you should buy it at 20 bucks. I really honestly don't. I think that it's an enormous failure. And as much as people hate it on JV XNJ Blue, the Blue Edition annihilates the Silver Edition, annihilates it. The best of the three is the Red Crimson Edition, JV XNJ Crimson. That's the best of the three. Silver is the worst. I think it sucks. It's the worst release of 2019, designer-wise, in my opinion. All right, guys. That's it. These are the five fragrances that I really didn't like at all this year. And uh, again, I don't hate cool. I just think it's not as good as cologne and it's replacing cologne, so it's kind of an issue. I know that some of you guys out there love some of these fragrances that I wasn't very nice to today. Again, it's not a shot against you. We all like different things. I get that. I respect that you like these fragrances. Hopefully you don't like silver, but if you do, it's okay. I still love you. As always, thanks for your support. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.